Hi. Good morning. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I'm just happy to be here right now in Savior uh, amongst the top uh, young women and men of our country. Um, I once sat where you sat. You're sitting now, actually. But way up north in Katipunan, the school you might know as Ateneo. And I remember looking up at the stage and looking at this old guy giving some inspirational talk just trying his best to inspire me. And before I be try to become that old guy for you guys, let me first introduce myself properly. I'm Dr. Patrick Bugayong. I am the co-founder, the chief product officer, the data privacy officer, and the digital marketing head, as well as the medical officer of AID, the, healthcare, the, only, the first ever platform here in the Philippines that brings healthcare to your home. Wow, that's a lot, no? I actually purposely mentioned all my titles and positions. I wanted to drive a point. All those titles didn't mean anything to me before when I was young. I didn't even know what a co-founder was. The real title that I really wanted there was the first ever title I earned. It was doctor. So I'm sure every one of you right now was asked at one point in your life, what do you want to be when you grow up? Am I right? Uh, any lawyers here? Any future businessmen? Any doctors? Well, that was my answer. I wanted to be a doctor. Ever since I could remember, I wanted to be a doctor. They were the closest thing to being a superhero for me. I remember watching my pediatrician put on, put on his white, pristine coat. And I thought, wow, I wanted to be just like him. And after that, every one of my toys were doctor's equipment. At four years old, I got my first first aid kit. At nine years old, I asked Santa for my first stethoscope. Imagine that. And my favorite show back then was Doogie House or MD. A show about a 13-year-old who went through med school graduated top of his class, and became the youngest, smartest, best doctor in the state. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are scratching your heads right now. What show is this? And it's, it's kind of showing my age, but I guess you recognize him more now as Barney Stinson from How I Met Your Mother. Right? Oh, I got you there, right? So going back, when I was in grade school, all I had were anatomy books. I never read my CLEs, I never read my my Filipino books. All I had were anatomy books. I would go to the library looking for new books about the human body. And yes, I was a science nerd, and I was proud of it. In the Ateneo High School, I was asked again by a guidance counselor what I wanted to be so she could help me find the best course for my college. And all I said was, I, I told this before, I wanted to be a doctor. She asked, is there a second option? No, that was the only option. And so lucky enough, I passed my entrance exam, got into the pre-med course that I always wanted, and then four years later, thinking I'm on the right path, I passed my NMAT exam. And I went on to UST, University of Santo Tomas, to pursue my medical degree. I was there, I was headed, towards Sampaloc. Imagine, a Katipunan boy for 16 years headed towards Manila. It scared the living uh, out of me. <laughs> it was a country on its, all on its own. It's not like Katipunan. But uh, no matter how scared I was, I persevered. I pushed through because I remember the, the words of one of my mentors, never stray from your path. Always follow your vision. And my vision was to help as many patients as I can. To be one of the best cardiothoracic surgeons in the Philippines. To build hospitals, clinics across the archipelago. And I promise you, I never failed. I never faltered and I was unwavering at times. I was top of my class in college, top 20% in my med school. And yet, I pushed and pushed. And luckily enough, in 2010, after all those sleepless nights, after 20 years of continuous studying, after alcohol binges, after crying myself to sleep sometimes, after 
um, mistakes upon mistakes upon mistakes along the way. I made it. I graduated with my medical degree, and I was a doctor. After that, I started ironing out my 10-year plan, right? Well, I don't know if you guys have 10-year plans, but I started ironing out. I said to myself, ready yourself for another 10 years of 36-hour duties, pain and suffering, liver-killing nights where you just drink and drink and forget about what happened that day. I was ready myself for that. And yet, I was lucky enough to see and get into the Cardinal Santos Medical Center. There, I continued my training. It, was, it seems like a great story, right? But remember, we're life refracted. Refracted doesn't only show different views, it shows brokenness. And here I am today, talking to you not as a doctor, but I introduce myself as a co-founder of a tech startup. And all honesty, I never even knew what a startup was. I had to Google it when I was doing my first startup. And actually now, it's still funny for me to say that I'm a founder of a startup. But I am deadly proud of it. Life is just like building your startup. This is a simple math, uh, simple math. It starts with one idea, right? And then you strategize and you plan for it. And then you pray to God someone believes in your idea and gives you money, finances it. And then you'll hit a certain point, a realization that may change everything. All this before you could even taste a slice of success. My life started with one idea, to be a doctor. I planned it, four years pre-med, four years med school, 10 years uh, training. I, I, I look for financiers, just like all of you. Who are your financiers? Your parents, so I had my parents as well. But I never, uh, was never ready for that realization that hit me right at my face. My company's journey and my life's journey revolves around a certain word, pivot. Um, pivot is defined by Eric Rice as a change in strategy without a change in vision. Startup founders from early on are taught to be ready to pivot any time, to be open to it. And this was so foreign to me. When I was a kid, I was always told to never stray. Always follow the straight path. Always go for that goal, right? And yet, I realized after reading, there are two rules why a company actually should start to think about pivoting. It's that your company has hit a plateau or that your perspective has changed. And I promise you, in life, it's the same. It, it feels like you're, you, you're thinking right now, why would he actually give it all, all up? Why, is he, why did he forget about being a doctor, his career? No, his dream. He dedicated his whole life to this dream and just suddenly is in front of us now talking about a tech startup. Well, the two rules actually hit me hard and I didn't even know it. I hit a plateau and my perspective changed. So I remember one day during my training and surgery, I, was, uh, I woke up from my bed and I felt a shooting pain from my neck down to my right arm. I couldn't move it. If I tried to move it, it was excruciating. I felt the worst pain of my life and it went all the way down to my toes. I couldn't get up from my bed. And there I lied, thinking like a doctor, making all the differential diagnosis, trying to figure out what's wrong with me. And I couldn't. I just couldn't. And there, I just saw the vision of my dream of being this surgeon. I held on to it like it was fleeting, and it was. I wept that whole day. I, was in, I locked myself in my room, and I just wept. But I promise you, I got through it. It was so difficult, but I got through it. And let me talk like a tech guy now. In the industry, or in the tech industry, we, we oftentimes prepare ourselves to meet blockers along the way. Same with life. There will always be blockers along the way. 
And one of the worst blockers we always term as showstoppers. Showstoppers are bugs that you find in the system that can actually stop everything from working. It could actually halt everything. And this was my showstopper. This was my showstopper. So the worst days of my life happened the few days later. I called in sick that day. I called in sick the next day. And then the next day. Then it became a week. It became a month. I had to push myself out of bed to go to the hospital to see my doctors, to get my MRIs, to get blood tests done, to do my rehab. Imagine my body already damaged and hurt and still driving two hours to the hospital. That was excruciating. Those really were the worst days of my life. I hit a plateau and I was inconsolable. But a year later, I never quit and I never gave up. Again, that was the only battle cry I knew. And I made it through. I returned to the profession I love so dearly, but at a price. I was never to become a surgeon. A surgeon has to stand up for 12 to 24 hours. My physicians told me I can't do it for six. My neck would crumble and I would be paralyzed. So I said to myself, I guess this is it. I guess I'm never becoming the surgeon I've always wanted. And it was then on, during these worst days of my life, I brought my laptop to work. I started typing the first ever conceptualization of a platform that would bring care to your home. And I didn't know by then, which I knew now, this was the first, concept, the first steps to making my app, Aid. So let's forget about aid for a while. I'll talk about that later. So, sorry. So I continued on. Moving from Cardinal Santos, I went to a public hospital. And it is here that I learned that not only to listen to my patients, but to listen to my colleagues, my fellow medical professionals. We shared the pitfalls of our dreams. And it was here I met a 50-year-old doctor who was struggling to pay for his bills. I met a 65-year-old nurse taking care of 80 patients a day, but being paid minimum wage. I met nursing students who were fearing for their careers because they knew when they graduated or passed the boards, there was no certainty of a job. There was just not enough opportunities in the Philippines. And I met a PT who actually applied to become a call center agent to earn a little more money. This, for me, was my change in perspective. I was no longer looking to be the best doctor. I was actually looking for jobs and opportunities for my colleagues now. And it was on this fateful day when I was drinking with my nurses that I realized that being a doctor wasn't the end goal. It wasn't actually my vision. It was a means to help people. And that was the goal. That was my vision, to help so I was thinking, is this time? Is this time for me to go away from this path? No, not yet. I was so stubborn. It was only when my Lola, who suffered from a debilitating gastric problem, she had to undergo serious surgery. When she went home, she lives in Bulacan, she asked me for help. She was looking for a nurse. And I said, okay, I'll find you one. Because she was so sick and tired of traveling from Bulacan to St. Luke's, almost every week, just to get IV insertions. Imagine, I saw in her eyes what I saw during my worst days of my life. Putting yourself in that situation, I never wanted anyone else, especially my Lola, to go through it. So I looked and I looked for a nurse, and for the life of me, I couldn't find one. So I, dev I, di I failed. I couldn't help my Lola. That was the last straw. That was it. And I looked at my Koya, I remember that day, and I said, isn't there an app for this already? Short answer, no. Long answer, I'm going to make one. So after 32 years, I picked up my first non-medical book, The Lean Startup by Eric Rice, and saw those words, pivot. And I chose to pivot. That day, I chose to pivot my life. I left behind my career and never looked back. Being a doctor meant everything to me. You will figure this out one day. You have a passion. 
that will be something you live for. It's their why to live. But it does not define you. Being a doctor to, for me was to help others. And by pivoting, I created aid. And through aid, I have helped more people than I could have ever helped if I was stuck in my clinic. So now, I promise you, making, the, making this decision would be the scariest decision of your life. So learn from your mentors. Look for mentors. And I was lucky enough to find one in Joey Garango. He's a tech startup guru in the Philippines. He's one of the brainchilds of something you might know as Microsoft. Um, he actually helped me. And he was my first mentor that never said the words, never stray, push forward. No. He was the first mentor who always told me, pivot, pivot, pivot. Learn from your users. Learn from your validations. Learn from your experience. The person who just pushes on forward, he's going to hit a wall if he doesn't know how to turn. And trust me, when you start realizing that you have to pivot, look for comfort. I look for comfort in my family. They were there. And I look for comfort in every single one of those small details. My, my daughter, my son, my wife. And today I am standing in front of you as proudly enough to say that I am non, a non-practicing doctor. Because I do miss it sometimes. But when I look forward, as of today, my app has given jobs to 3,000 medical professionals. We have serviced Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. We have 120,000 downloads and growing at 60% a month. We, are, we have become the number one medical app in the country. We have been given the title of the top 10 startups by the Startup World Cup 2017 and Best Newcomer by the ASEAN Group Rice Bowl. And we have proudly joined in Ayala's healthcare ecosystem. We started this in 2016, just three siblings. We had three employees, the founders, my Koya, my Ate, and myself. We now have 30. We had two medical professionals, one with my midwife, one PT at the very first start. We now have over 3,000. These are our awardees. So I promise you, pivoting isn't a, a, a magic pill. It's not going to lead you to su success. It should be the last resort. But I'm here to tell you that it isn't always a straight path. That it is okay to pivot. Because if I heard that from someone up here, then I would have started aid a long time ago. So remember when someone asks you what you want to be when you grow up, it's okay. It's okay if you do not become that person. So just pivot and do it proudly. I thank you.